Hello and welcome to the Florida Cable Telecommunications Association's Capital Dateline. I'm Brad Swanson, your host, and I'm once again joined by Jim Saunders of the News Service of Florida. He's their executive editor, and he's got quite a few stories for us this week. <laughs> Jim, how you doing? Uh, we're fine. <laughs> good, good. I think uh, all things relative. I think now Tallahassee is getting back to fine, and uh, but yet once again, our capital is a statewide story. Let's talk a little bit about the hurricane and what's going on. Yeah, the hurricane uh, plowed right through Tallahassee, and and four or five days later, we're still sitting here. Four days later, we're still sitting here with some of us uh, lacking power, and uh, it's become a pretty big contro controversy within the capital. I think. To put it in perspective, though, I mean, it's a Category 1 hurricane. I'm not sure what would have happened if it would have been a major, major hurricane. But uh, Tallahassee's pretty proud of its trees. Mm -hmm. But uh, its trees landed on a lot of power lines. So the biggest problem has been power outages. And, uh, uh, you know, it's been a lot of delays in getting the power back up, which has caused a lot of discussion in Tallahassee. Well, and frankly, if you think about the discussion, it's not only a discussion, but it's it's who's experiencing the discomfort. You know, we have a, a very large group of our statewide journalists here <laughs> that focus on covering government, but it's it's the government that is making them uncomfortable. Well, it kind of magnifies they... things when it hits home, you know? Right. I mean, uh, as opposed to if it were some area that, that you know, we're never in. So. Uh, but yeah, it's it's so it's drawn a lot of attention and uh, and I, one of the big thing that's been going on is that uh, Governor Scott has been very aggressive in his uh, his uh, reaction to the storm and his some of his statements uh, regarding whether Tallahassee has moved fast enough to restore power and it's caused quite a bit of uh, of back and forth between the governor and the mayor of Tallahassee, Andrew Gillum who is a, uh, just by chance, is a up-and-coming Democratic uh, uh, politician in the state. So there's been a lot of back and forth, and that's part of what's gotten a lot of this coverage is, is sort of this, this controversy about, uh, you know, the governor's position is basically that the Tallahassee has not moved fast enough to accept outside help from utilities, uh, or outside utilities, uh, and uh, also, uh, you know, other assistance to, to get power back up. Uh, the city refutes that. They argue that they're doing everything correctly. Um, so, it, you know, restoring power after something like this is a complex undertaking. I don't think anybody should, you know, fool themselves that, that it's not. But, uh, but there is a lot of back and forth between the governor's office and the city. It has been for a few days now. And uh, it's, uh, it's gotten a lot of attention locally, also through social media. Uh, I think part of the issue is that the governor, uh, and we've seen this before, the governor recognizes how politically important it is to react strongly to, to crisis types of situations. I mean, I think everybody in Florida learned a lesson from the way Jeb Bush handled hurricanes in 2004, 2005, when we had hurricane after hurricane, and he handled it very aggressively. He got a lot of praise for that. I think you have to look at Katrina as well. I mean, the... George W. Bush administration, I think everybody believes mishandled Katrina, and that came back to haunt them. So I think Governor Scott has learned those lessons and has moved very aggressively, but uh, this back and forth between the governor's office and the city has kind of uh, sucked up a lot of oxygen around here. Right, right. What we need to focus on is making sure we get uh, everybody back up and running and, and back to, to work and get Florida up and working again, at least this side of Florida. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's turn our focus back to the elections. I know a lot of the uh, the post-election coverage kind of got muddled by the hurricane, <laughs> rightly so, but there were some interesting stories. Uh, let's let's go there and and let's start in Miami and and again work our way northward. Well, one of the one of the uh, most interesting developments on on last week was uh, Dwight Bullard, uh, who's an incumbent senator and his his he's kind of a legacy in that Senate uh, district down there. He, uh, he got challenged pretty heavily uh, by Andrew Korge, who was a well-funded Democrat, and, uh, and Bullard smoked him. <laughs> I mean, he, he really, he, he, came, he won easily. And there was a lot of question about whether Bullard would win that primary and how he would fare, because that district he's in was totally redrawn, became a much more Hispanic-oriented uh, district. Uh, and, but Bullard, uh, I mean, he came through 
uh, you know, with flying colors and won that primary. It also sets up a very interesting general election race because he will run against uh, Representative Frank Artillas, who's trying to trying to win that seat. Artillas has been sitting on a bunch of money, and he's going to have a whole lot more money available to him. Uh, he also will, he is Hispanic, so that may help him in that district. But I think one thing the primary showed is that the Bullard name must mean something down there uh, because D uh, Dwight Bullard uh, easily won that primary. Wow, I mean, we're going to wait to see, but we know that. Uh, we're expecting uh, all the forces to come to bear on that that campaign for the general, yeah. so it should be interesting. All right, so let's move northward. Now we're, we're in Orlando, and uh, we've seen some interesting things come up that kind of Kind of missed the, the mainstream report, but now we're seeing... Uh... I, I think one of the great untold... Well, it wasn't totally untold, but largely untold stories of primary night was in a Senate district, uh, totally redrawn Senate district, that Senate President Andy Gardner is vacating because of term limits. The Democrats really think they have a chance to win that redrawn district. It's perf The redrawn boundaries have performed well for Democrats uh, in recent elections. But there was a lot of money and a lot of uh, emphasis put on Mike Clellan as the Democratic candidate in that race. He uh, is a former state house member. He had labor support. He had trial bar support. When you get those two together, you got a lot of money, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, sort of institutional support there. But primary night, he lost. <laughs> he lost to Linda Stewart, who is a former county commissioner in Orange County. Uh, one, she also served one term in the state house. She didn't raise hardly any money, uh, relatively, and uh, she came out and won that primary. So uh, she will run in the general election against Dean Asher, who is a Republican uh, who did not face pr a primary opponent, also has raised a considerable amount of money, very strongly backed by realtors. And uh, I, you got to wonder whether business groups are going to come in behind him and see that as an opportunity for Republicans to hold on to that seat. Again, I think everybody uh, looks at it as a Democratic performing district, but uh, uh, you know, will Stewart have the resources to really campaign in that district hard? Or whether she may just have enough name ID and, and in sort of community support that it will really help carry her. But uh, that was sort of a surprise to me on election night that uh, that Clella went down. Yeah, it should be interesting to see, you know, if the institutional experience on how that district performs will really tell the story, and, and will those those stories play out in the general well, election? Well, that's one of the big questions all over the state. I mean, they redraw the the Senate and congressional districts are redrawn all over the state, but how they're actually going to perform versus how they performed in the past. Uh, is going to be really interesting to see play out in November because uh, all this is theoretical until the until it's actually election night, and when things like that happen at the uh, you know on on the primary in that in that Senate district, uh, you know sort of the landscape changes a little bit. So we'll, it'll be interesting to see in districts like that how how the redistricting plays out. Right. It's a gut check for the pros to really see if they know as, as much from their past as they do about what's going to happen in the future. All right. So you mentioned the word congressional. So let's <laughs> let's go to probably one of the most famous congressional races <laughs> in the country. Take it from there. Well, and this involves redistricting too, but Corrine Brown, the uh, Congresswoman from Jacksonville went down on primary night and uh, she has represented, she's been in Congress since 1992 was the first time she got elected. Redistricting totally redrew her district, uh, brought it from Jacksonville over to Gadsden County. But, uh, you know, s former State Senator Al Lawson uh, defeated her and by a fairly comfortable margin. Uh, you know, the other issue involved in that race besides redistricting is that Crean Brown is under federal indictment. So uh, she could, uh, you know, I think it's kind of a double whammy there. Uh, she was running in a lot of uh, territory where she had not run in the past. And uh, she also had this indictment hanging over her head. Uh, Lawson just smoked her out here in the western part of the county, uh, the Tallahassee area, which is very a lot of Democratic votes. He he way I mean he really beat her bad in in the western part of the county. Did well enough in Jacksonville, and uh, so he he's uh, he won that primary. And you know it's a Democratic seat. Uh, chances are uh, that Al Austin will be the next congressman from North Florida. Hmm, amazing. Interesting how that race wrapped up, and uh, we'll, uh, 
we'll stay tuned for uh, Al's performance or Congressman Lawson uh, now probably going to Congress. So yeah. interesting. Well, Jim, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for your insight and commentary. It really looked like it was um, the big stories happened on the Democratic side of the ticket in this yeah. one. We saw some close Republican primaries, but but maybe we'll see how those will affect the uh, the general election. Well, I have a feeling we'll have a few more opportunities to talk about it before November. We definitely will. That's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. For more news and opinions, go to our website at capitaldatelineonline.com or visit us on our Facebook page. Thank you for watching.